Hi everywhere. Good afternoon, good morning, good day, wherever you are. I'm with the wonderful Sally Aslan once again. Hey. And how are you, Sally? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. It's, uh, it's, can you believe it's nearly the end of March? Goodness me, it's just flying this whole year. Oh my goodness, yes. Looking forward to the caravan and camping show next weekend. Woohoo! Bring it on. <laughs> 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 so what are we talking about today, Harry? We're talking about fear or how to master it. Yes, fear of fear, I've entitled my little segment, which is also known as phobophobia. Did you know that? Oh, that's a long word. No, <laughs> I didn't know that. Fear of phobia. Yeah, it's fantastic. I've heard of agoraphobia. Mm. Oh, which is, yes, yes. Ar ar arachnophobia. There you go. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Ooh, those creepy, creepy, creepy crawlies. <laughs> so, I mean, fear's a big thing. Huge. It strikes people of all ages. You're never too old to be scared or have a fear. Absolutely. I mean, there's all different types of fear. There's, like we were just saying, fear of um, snakes, fear of spiders, fear of heights, fear of flying, fear of animals. And then the, you get into other levels. There's fear of failure. There's fear of not Yes. Fear of failure is a huge one, isn't it? Fear of failure, which is um, it's a massive topic. Fear of rejection, fearing of being different, fearing of appearing foolish, fear of taking a risk, fear of stepping out of your comfort zone. Fears affect us differently at all different stages of life, like you were saying. You know, like it, it, as you would know with kids, you know, there's the fear of separation, separation from your parents, like going to school or just being left with a nanny or, you know, away from your comfort zone. Fear of strangers, that's a big one for kids. Fear of animals. Oh, I, think, I yeah. think that's a big one for adults. I don't think it's a big one for kids. What, fear of strangers? <laughs> yeah, because they're... Mm. Mm. But some, I mean, fear is both instinctive and also learned. So, I mean, kids in general are taught don't talk to strangers. So just be fearful of... It depends on your age, of course, but... I didn't teach my kids that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, don't, you know, <laughs> as a mum and you're in a shopping centre and the kids are at that age, marginal age of, you know, can they go into the toilet on their own or not? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Don't talk to anybody that's strange or, you know, keep the door locked, wash your hands and come straight out. You're standing yeah. outside the door. That's more of my fear. <laughs> yeah. Kids also have that fear of the dark, you know, sometimes. It's yes, like, fear of the dark is a big one. Yes. Yeah with a little lamp on or whatever but you know kids often grow out of a lot of those fears and then when you move into adolescence there's all those social pressures you know of, of keeping up or being fear of humiliation you know if they don't join in with what's what other friends are doing and that comes in with you know if i don't partake in the drinking or you know trying a cigarette or whatever it is there's a lot of um pressures there the fear of not being accepted not being cool mm -hmm. Losing your virginity, the last one in the class, you know. Oh, my, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that one, Harry. <laughs> well, what about what about fear of missing out? You talked about social media. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Having to, having to glue yourself to this in case you miss out on somebody else's trivia. Well, you know? particularly at those age when some kids have phones and some don't, you know, missing out in that sense, in that sort of change over from primary school to senior school when kids are often getting phones and then um you know the fear yeah definitely fear of not missing out especially if they're not allowed onto social media or, or you know got very controlled usage over their phones it's yeah there's that fear of like oh i don't know what's going on when everyone's talking about you know the latest snapchat or whatever it is i don't know i'm not completely up with all the lingo but you know from adolescence then you move into adults and how many fears do we have is that fear of failure is a huge one for adults. That was one of the biggest mm. when I was public like, speaking. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that one. Public speaking is a huge one. Yeah. Most people would prefer to die than public speak. <laughs> <laughs> Be exposed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and when I was looking at the grouping of types of fear, you know, there's around financial fear. You know, you might be in a job that's not great, but you want to change, but then you're worried about finances or 
um, you know, the fear of not paying the bills or just not earning enough money, whatever it is. Um, there's the social fear of not fitting in, not being accepted, um, not being cool. There's the relationship fear of, oh, what if they want to break up with me? What if they don't want to be with me? Or, or fear that I'll never find anybody, that never, nobody's ever going to like me. Um, and then there's the physical fear of just doing physical things. You know, like last week you were talking about jumping off the ledge, you know, that fear of taking that leap. You know, as kids and you're on ropes and you're swinging into creeks and then letting go, you know, oh, my goodness. You know, that also leads in with the fear of heights. Did you ever at swimming have to jump off a big board? Part of our swimming sort of um, lessons involved over one session, you had to jump from a height. So rather than just jumping. Yeah, I, did, I never liked the biggest, highest board in country swimming pools. Yeah. It was scary. Yeah, very I, scary. I used to do it to a pin drop, but I didn't like diving. Often, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, you're but, talking but, belly flopper. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the long back, it's a weakness. But it's interesting. I was given a free month of Apple Music. Oh, yeah. Two weeks ago. And so I've been playing with it and using it. And it struck me that behind that is um, tapping into people's fear of silence. Ah, yeah. Because they... They fill their life. Well, the temptation, if you've got Apple Music or whatever, is is you've got noise around you the whole time. Mm. There's no space for the silence. And so I, I was thinking, you know, well, is there a fear of silence? Maybe there is. Uh, what can would I, happen? Can I mm. say myself and a number of other people um, have experienced that fear of the silence when we split up and all of a sudden mm. we didn't have the kids you come home and the house was empty. And for however many years, all we've known is noise and chaos mm. and whatever. And then you come home and you're faced with this emptiness. And a number of my clients, we've commented on this. It's probably the number one challenge when we split up is, is that silence? And, and it makes you feel uncomfortable. I've, I've since mm. gone into it and I embrace it and look forward to some, some peace and quiet. But at the beginning, the silence was, it was, um, it ruffled my feathers. Didn't know how to cope. Yeah. And yes. you're right, just people not feeling comfortable or, um, with just with silence and, and no noise and no hustle bustle because often yeah. it, it, it's a great time for you to reflect upon things and to reflect inwardly and that yeah. can be quite uncomfortable as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think excruciating for some people. Yeah, yeah. Fear, of, fear of being alone is another yeah. one. Huge, 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 huge. I mean, fear of dog, fear of dogs. They might bite me. Oh yes, yep, that's a big one. Fear of dogs. Fear of, fear of driving. You know, uh, a lot of a lot of female migrants yep. have this fear of driving because they didn't learn when they were young. What about fear of getting fat? Oh my goodness! You know, that's a, as an aging woman. <laughs> fat ho, fatobia. <laughs> <laughs> fatobia, absolutely. Fear of getting fat. I love someone. Fat fatobia. Love it, Harry. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, so fear the other side of fear, the other side of fear of being alone is fear of being encouraged. Mm, mm. Lots, the whole, whole spectrum of social phobias. Yeah, like Asperger's. That's one of the, the things, isn't it? Don't fear of being touched. Mm. Fear of being hurt. Yep. Right. So there's lot, lots of kids I see with sensory issues where. You know that, that they either don't like a light touch or heavy touch. Or yeah, because I'm actually label. Mm. Uh, as a massage therapist, there's some people that just go, "Oh no, it's like it can't do it. Can't mm. can't allow people to touch me." And or germs, the oh, hygiene. Oh my god, labels. cleanliness. Yes, <laughs> OCD. <laughs> Fear of germs. Yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Fear of people. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. But, uh, you know, fear often links into that anxiety and worry and insecurity. It brings that up a lot. And it, and it can basically stifle us and paralyse a lot of us so that we, we don't have the strength or the courage to take a step, particularly if we're talking about changing things that we would like to have some improvement in our life or do things differently. And there's that fear of getting off that comfortable island into sort of an unknown territory and not knowing what's going to be on the other side, even though our gut instinct 
is driving us that it's going to be a better option for us. Um, yeah, fear involves weighing up a lot of stuff, doesn't it? You know, but it's maybe we're sensing danger. Yes, and yeah. it's a protective mechanism, and yeah. so. You know, I've got a wonderful story around this. My middle boy, um, we used to go, we had a trailer sailing, we used to go sailing, we towed a minnow behind it. A minnow, for those that don't boat, is a little tiny, it's the smallest plywood boat you can get with a sail. Mm. And anybody that's a really good sailor has probably learnt in the minnow because if you make the slightest mistake, it tips you in the water. Mm. It's completely unforgiving. <laughs> anyway, my middle boy was scared to go in it. And so I had, I had a conversation with him because it's a lot of fun, potentially. You have complete independence. You've got control. You're master of the ship mm. and so on. And I said, well, why, what are you scared of? He said, well, falling in. It might fall over. I said, well, well then what's the worst thing that can happen? Mm. Well, I get wet, Dad. Mm. So I said, well, how about we try it? I'll stand there in the shallow and we'll tip the boat over with you in it mm, mm. so we did that and he thought that was wonderful mm. oh, that's, it's really and, interesting. and then every time after that he just continuously tipped this boat up <laughs> so you he faced his fear yeah you ever been out on the, the cats when they come right up on the side you know yeah, oh, yeah. That, that does make me fearful but you know bottom line for that for me is fear of being hurt or fear of drowning you know it, it goes into the deeper level fears so but I mean, that's true, but it's often about exploring, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. And then when you've surfaced that from the depths of your stomach or your limbic system, it's, and you look at it in the light of day and actually it's not that big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember bungee jumping from a crane in London. It was 1989. Bungee jumping had yeah. just launched there. And I was so fearful. I mean, it was in yes. the concrete car park. It wasn't even into water. And yeah. I thought, look, I'll try anything once. But the fear that rose up, oh, my yeah. God, it, was, it was frightening. It was scary. But then the adrenaline rush on the other side was so worth it. It was amazing. Yeah. It felt as though I'd really achieved something. It was really cool. So, so we were in New Zealand a few years ago, and I did see some people jump, bungee jump who really shouldn't have done they were so fearful and so stiff yeah. and they jerked so roughly at the bottom. Yeah. They would have done damage to yeah. some, some of their vertebrae. Mm. Um, so, mm. so, there are some, sorry, go on. There are some situations where the protection mechanism of fear is a physical protection and you need to pay attention to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, as I said before, um, you can both, fear can be learned as well as instinctual, um, yeah. so you've got conditioned fear over time that you're just conditioned, like I was saying about strangers, so maybe not little yeah. kids, maybe yeah. it is adults, but you're just conditioned into it. But then there's also that anticipatory anxiety that, you know, you've got this fear before it's already happened, you know, and it's just, it just you've worked yourself up into thinking um, as if believing it's already here. You know the I mean? plane's going to crash and I've got to yeah, get exactly, on board. Exactly. And don't get me started on the law of attraction. <laughs> 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 but, you know, fear, therefore, can over time, if you have that ongoing fear before things have even happened or occurred, it, it can harm your physical and mental well-being. You know, you can get yourself into such a state. My mum's a prime example of that, of worrying about stuff that hasn't even happened. And, um, and, and I mean, it's so much about not living in the moment. Yeah. Obviously, haven't re read Eckhart Tolle, and that generates chronic fear. Generates um, just it's 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 unhealthy because it the chemicals that you generate in your body attack the joints and connective mm. tissue. Yeah. You age quickly. The adrenaline is not helpful long term. Continuously. No, it's not time for that. Well, it's yeah. like chronic anxiety and it just builds up and builds up and builds up. And you're right, you get all those stress hormones repeatedly released into the body and it just it acquires and acquires. And I think a great thing is that it does age you. You know, always yeah. Yeah, and your posture changes, your demeanour amongst people become more inward. Yeah. 
some... I, I can think of quite a few people, as you can. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. You know, just a couple of really interesting stats, but 10 to 20% of the population have a fear of flying. Like, that's quite yeah. a high percentage. I didn't realise it was that high. Now, this, yeah. was, this stat is from the States, but 4% of the population have a fear of spiders, which is arachnophobia. But here in Australia, how many people do you know have a fear of snakes and a fear of sharks? Like, heaps. Sharks, yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm not a lover of snakes. I, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Did you have no, a I'm, I'm not. But if, you, if you're with kids or you make a noise, they're not going to yes. they're gonna run away. Yes. Unless you're un unlucky enough to stand on them in a path or something. No, yeah. This is, um, mm. When I go to Noosa, I, t I try not to be fearful, but one day I saw three different snakes, two brown snakes and a massive carpet snake. Whew, that was a massive walk. <laughs> that was like, whoa, the adrenaline was rushing and pumping. Whew. <laughs> that made me quite... I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure the snakes in, uh, in Noosa have got a Facebook page. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I follow them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and they make new faces on Snapchat. <laughs> Uh, make, make friends with them on Facebook. You'll be fine. So. <laughs> Just be nice to me. <laughs> so I've done a different type of model today. Um, there you go. I've done a sort of transitional model. I'll just quickly give you a little flick at the top. It's got stepping stones. So basically, right. you've got a line in the middle and you've got three words below the line and three words above the line. And in the below the line words, it's all encompassed around the word of fear, which then transitions over to above the line to become fearless. So at the bottom of this, of the three, the six stepping stones, if you like, is the fear of change, where there's too much worry and anxiety and overwhelm and you're almost leading into depression with feelings of um, helplessness. You know, it's just, I'm too fearful to change anything that I've got. And then the next stepping stone is impact. Um, the fear of the impact on how it's going to affect you, but also how it's going to affect others with different choices that you're going to make, mm. which can involve relationships. It can involve the impact of finances on your family. If you're really unhappy with your career, for example, and you just want to get out, but you're worried about ongoing commitments and what, how the impact is going to be on your family. And then the next stepping stone up is fear of the outcome. Like what will actually happen? You know, having that, oh, will it be okay? Taking that risk, will it pay off? And then once you cross that line, you then start to become a little bit fearless with by taking action. That was my next stepping stone, stepping stone four. Take the plunge and give it a go. Get, get uncomfortable, but at least try. Put yourself out there. Take that plunge. Put your big finger in or a big toe in and, and give it a go. And then this next step up after that is then fight. Fight that fear that just keeps rising up inside of you, you know, fight to overcome the anxiety and the self-doubt and the overwhelm and, you know, fight it and give it a go. And then if you can go through all of those steps, then you ultimately flourish because you feel better, more satisfied, um, possibly have that adrenaline rush, feel more empowered. And so this was a little model of taking you from fear to fearless with some easy stepping stones to move through. Did you like that one? <laughs> I did, I did. That was, that was really worth waiting for. I, like <laughs> I, think it's probably, I think it's probably better than my one. But anyway. Oh, no, I couldn't bet yours. You're the model king. <laughs> we, we actually left out one phobia. Yes, which we you... Oh, absolutely, fear of needles. Fear exactly. Of dentist. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. needles. Absolutely so huge one. My, my first one was just to get in the groove and feel your fear. Yep. Be aware of it. Feel it. It'll do things to your body. It'll raise your temperature. It'll raise your heart rate. It'll generate adrenaline. And you'll feel that in your body. It's yep. a physical, it's a physical um, condition. Yep. And then figure out what's the worst thing that can happen. Correct. You know? yep. Once you've done that, you can face your fear. And if you do all this, you can conquer it. You can embrace your courage. And if you do this, if you face your fears and, and take a step and fight the fear and take the plunge, yep. it'll give you enormous comfort. Yep. 
So fear is no friend. And, and it's, it's also a coward. Fear is a coward. Mm. And if you face it, it will always run away. 100% guarantee that. I love that. I love fear as a coward. I love mm. that. Always. Yep. So some of the other things you can do around fear is because of the physical effect it has on you, going into fight and flight, mm -hmm. is to exercise. It's to, <laughs> to exercise queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sally can teach you how to move every part of your body, even the bits you didn't know you had. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely love it. <laughs> um, do anything that will relax you. And for some, it'll be a massage. For others, it'll be watching a movie or cooking or... And then, and then, of course, eating well is really important. Yep. And taking care to, to drink in moderation. So alcohol, caffeine, yep. you know, stimulant. And connect. Connect with other people. Yep. Um, communicate yeah. goes along with that yeah. as well. Talk about... Connect and communicate. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yep. That's right. And there may be things like uh, massage, meditation, cognitive behavioral therapy that may be helpful. Mm. But you have to find out what's helpful for you as an individual. Absolutely. And, you know, unlike your mum, think and act at the same time. Yes, yes. This yes. was a live, I mean, I was a worry wart in my 20s, and somebody told me that phrase, think and act at the same time. And what that meant for me was if I couldn't change what I was worried about mm. in that moment, Mm. No point in worrying about it. It's That's something to action tomorrow. Yeah. I can't remember who it is. It may be Brene Brown. Someone talks about the five, four, three, two, one, act within that time, and yeah. then you can't overthink it. It's just, it's yeah. gone. You get past yeah. that. I can't so I might have a car crash coming home tonight. Yeah. But I'm not in the car yet. <laughs> so I don't need to worry about it. It's okay. Absolutely. I can worry about that until I get in the car. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to have a walk between now and then. Yeah. <laughs> You'll attract it. <laughs> now, I had three. Um... That's, that's why I've got a bull bar. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was for the kangaroo. <laughs> Not the people. So, I had three tips for um, how to do Three tips as well. God. Three tips. No yes. stopping you tonight. Out today. Yes, yes, yes. Had a cancellation this morning. Number <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> is assess, so we've already mentioned it, weigh up your options, look at the good and the bad options, and then assess what's stopping you. Why, aren't, why are you having this fear and why aren't you doing something about it or changing if that's what you want? Then the second tip is then to act, either choose to freeze, which is stay the same, stay, stay in that crippled area, um, fight, so you can um, act with fighting, fight the fear and then take the risk. Or you can act by flighting, which is running away from the worrying anxiety and bury your head in the sand and pretend everything's okay. So shutting the door on moving forward mm. and go, go away. I'm just going to hide, hide in, in, in fright from it all. So, um, you know, clearly fighting your fear and, and going for it is the way to do it, but just really acting. So you, you're actually doing something, but often you do get a little bit paralyzed and you just literally freeze and then if you are able to, you know, assess and it's okay for you and it's going to be more beneficial and it's good choices and you're acting and fighting that fear, then you're going to achieve. You know, you're going to re reward yourself for giving it a go and, and usually most of the time have better outcomes as opposed to avoiding it, staying the same, not taking the risk and, and staying crippled with the fear. So getting it yeah. at home. So assess, act and achieve. My tips That's really good, Sally. I didn't get to three tips today, <laughs> but so we're going to do yours. <laughs> <laughs> Sally's top tips today. <laughs> yeah. I'd love this topic because the more you think about it, there's so many levels of fear. Just, you know, it encompasses so many people in this world. And fear is usually of the future, of stuff that hasn't even happened. You know, often. That's right. The fear, fear of change is a really big one. Yeah. 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 As opposed to. Um, you know, reflecting on the past and the anxiety linked to, or not, at more depression of the past, the things that have happened, but the fears of the future based on what you've experienced so far. Yeah. And, and it's all, it's all in the mind. It's yeah. not reality. Yeah. I think you've made a really good point that 
if we're living in the now, it's going to reduce the fear because it hasn't even happened, like you said, not getting in the car, you know, or yeah. not getting bit And so often, with, so often with clients, I'll, I'll ask them, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? And that's a wonderful way to surface yeah. the, the little roadblock that really isn't that big and it's not going to crush you. Yeah. You know, it's not an enormous great landslide. It's a tiny little pebble, actually. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You know, so do you think kids are more fearful or adults are more fearful? I think there are whole clusters of families where fear is dominant. Yes. I think that it filters down from the parents. Yeah. It filters down from school friends and schools and social media. And I yeah. think there's just so many influences. Yeah, absolutely. When I was researching, there's a lot, I mean, clearly a lot of influence from the parents. So if the, the parents go out fearful or anxious, that's what the kids are conditioned with. So that's just a normal environment. Well, I mean, this thing about stranger danger, my goodness. Hmm. It's, I, I don't believe there's any evidence around it. In hmm. fact, I think the evidence is the opposite. Hmm. Places probably got safer, but parents are terrified. Yeah, paranoid. Yeah. I, have, I have one mum who, um, well, there's a, there's a book around this which I'll put up called Range Free Kids. Um, it's a very, imp it, it made the, uh, the woman who wrote this, a mother in New York, infamous because she let her young child go on the subway home alone, <laughs> which was quite safe. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the cops didn't think so. Um, but but I, one of my, one of my mums, um, used to drop her son off. He was really quite young, five or six, on one side of the pine forest and drive over to the other side. And he had to navigate through the pine forest to get to her wow. while she was the Saturday paper. Wow. In peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, look, that's pretty... But, but, I, but I have other mums who say, oh, no, I would never let my kids out on the street. Yeah, there yeah. are strangers there. Yeah. And I think that is so sad. Yeah. Yeah, because it makes us stop and think when you bring that up, Harry, because it's true. It's just, um, yeah, it's we're just conditioned often that way, just through the media and whatever else. That, um, of course we have to be careful. They're precious. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, interesting. But I, I can look at it on your street. I wouldn't be letting my kids out on that street. <laughs> I'd be run over in about five seconds. My goodness. Oh, don't worry about the kids. What about the dogs? <laughs> the dogs. Yeah, yeah. I used to have dogs. And they would run the, reception, the receptionist today was telling me she, she went over to a friend's place and they let the dogs out and they killed the little kangaroo. So it wasn't so nice. Oh, dear. You have the best stories. <laughs> Hunt, hunting dogs. Oh. Then they had to wash them off before they were allowed to come back in. Oh, wow. Wow. But I mean, I said to her, pet food, it's mostly kangaroo, so. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's right. Not in the can, fresh. Oh, yeah. Well, their iron levels would be enormous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. And there's no shortage of roos in Canberra. None at all. That's what blew me away. When I first came to Canberra last year, I hadn't been there since like I was seven. And in my head, I had Concrete City. It's anything but. What? It's amazing. No. It's so beautiful. It's all bushy mm. outdoors. You've got yeah. kangaroos at the end of your street. Like, it's incredible. We have kangaroos in the street. Whoa. Whoa. It's in the drought when people water their gardens. They come in the street, and you have to be really careful driving home because you're on autopilot. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, they said they bounce out without warning. To be yeah. very careful. Yeah, especially at dusk. Goodness me. Yeah. yeah. That's right. The only mm. thing we get around here is foxes. <laughs> Don't you get cockies? Oh, not really in the city. We do in no. the parks, yeah. We do in the no. parks, but not in yet. Lots of crows and foxes and, of course, yeah. possums everywhere. Yeah. Possums are beautiful. Love them. <laughs> 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 they, they, they eat the roses at our place. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. You don't mm. put the spikes up on the fence or anything. Well, go over that. They're, yeah, they're they acrobats. Are. Yeah, they are. Aren't they? Yeah, they're out of the circus. Yeah. <laughs> well, Harry, I love this topic. I really love it. And it's something that is super important for 
for everyone to really stop and think about what are you fearful of? Like, as you say, what's the worst thing can happen? And if you're living in the now, it helps waylay a lot of the fear of which is about the future. You know, just stop just right now. Just let it go. Yeah. I'm doing a swap with another therapist and he's been working on my liver. Right. No, kid, kidneys. Kidneys, it was. Kidneys, that's right. Anyway, he dug really deep and I dug really deep into my limbic system and I found three fears. One was a fear of not being loved. Mm -hmm. One was a fear of being poor. And the other, the other was a fear of the silence or the quiet. I know it's so deep and hidden. So we worked on that. Wow. So all got fears. And oh, some of them were deeply hidden than others. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that was a real exploration for me. That was interesting. We're going to do more work this week on it. Yeah. Face your fears and do it anyway. That's the name yeah. of it, I think. Yeah. That's right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you have any books today that you wanted to um, mention? Uh, just know? Range Free Kids, which yep. I'll put up. Yep. So that was, that's probably the main one, and I'll probably look up another one, but at least that one. That's one of my favourites. It's in my bookshelf. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, who's the author for that? Because I have heard of that one. Range Free Kids. I'll see if I can find it. Fear, phobophobia, fear of fear. I love that. <laughs> Loving the bow tie, Harry. I cannot find it, but I can find this one, which is pretty good. It's uh, toxic, toxic childhood. childhood. How the modern yeah. world is damaging our children and what we can do about it. Whoa. Yeah, that's, that's written by a lovely retired teacher called Sue Palmer. Yep. And she's one of my heroes because she speaks in English and she and writes American in an accessible or way. Or no, sorry. she's British, British. British. So there's lots of stuff in here, which is good. So I'll put that one in as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your blogs are awesome. I highly recommend everybody to get on and read them because they're, they're really informative and they're easy to read. And they've got some really good stuff in there, Harry. You've put in a lot of work. Well, it's the impetus of doing this with you that allows me to do it easily. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It, again, it's about the collaboration, which is wonderful. Yeah. Which no, we I both really get a lot out of. Yeah. yeah, and I love your input because it always makes me stop and think. <laughs> and we always have a laugh. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'll let you go because it's sort of like to get home to your family. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, don't, don't forget to get rid of that, uh, that shifty blonde on your YouTube channel. Oh, yes, I must change <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's my that's my naughty twin sister. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, Don't no, know what she's doing. Oh, What's no, she doing? She's she's trying trying to <laughs> <laughs> oh well, thanks again, Harry. I look forward to catching up with you next week, and look forward okay. to reading the blog. And I hope you have an awesome week. Don't be you have a great week too. <laughs> Don't get <Yeah>. fearful diarrhea. <laughs> no, no, especially no, no. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the way home. <laughs> okay. All right, see you later. See you later. Bye. Bye.